All right, so here we are back on the bench, uh, off the tube. And, you know, let's just start with what the rest of the note here says. And, let's see. Uh, this is from a forum post on KLOV, but I piggybacked on another thread. Uh, since repairs are run long, it's breaking. Okay. I have a untested, or I got untested 7000, running on a stock known working 7000 tube yoke, ignore the TV frame. Uh, partial collapse tested pin 6 of IC3 found 20 to 22 volts instead of 24. Should be closer to 25. Tested B plus unregulated side 153. Uh, regulated was 101 to 108. Yikes. Uh, yeah, it should be around 130. Vertical size, position, and 50 60 pots do nothing. Well, we verified that's an accurate statement. Uh, steps taken. Full cap kit, except filter cap, no difference. Uh, Refloat all known weak points. Noticed pin 4 of IC4 was very cold, is referring to the solder joint. Refloat the legs in IC4, and that regained 130 volts on the blue side. Close enough. Uh, yeah, that is in, that's in the realm of good enough. Uh, but low B plus wouldn't cause collapse like that. Now reading 20, oh, reflow, now reading 25 volts on IC3. So, traditionally speaking, low B plus wouldn't cause, you know, partial collapse like that. Uh, it'll cause blooming where the screen will jitter around and expand and contract and everything as various uh, things change on the screen, but it wouldn't cause partial collapse like what we saw. But I did fix, that did have 25 volts back. That did bring that back to the IC. Check the remote board by swapping remote board with good chassis. Reflowed remote connections on chassis side did nothing. Replaced IC3 and 2 per the flow chart, no help. Replaced IC4, which is the, um, the voltage regulator. That's pretty much where they are now. Uh, well, looks like they already changed out the vertical IC, so we can kind of rule that out as the cause. Um, we can go ahead and... and uh, we can go ahead and check it to make sure none of the pins are reading off of what this should. Uh, but yeah, they did do a good job on the cap kit and uh, they did go through and I verified they did go through and reflow some of the uh, weak points, uh, some of the, you know, R101 and uh, R89 and R104. Uh, R103 didn't get hit. Not that it matters, but I'm going to hit R103 here real quick. But let's test. Let's grab the meter here. And let's just make sure that none of our pins for our vertical IC are shorted to ground or read anything off of what they should. All right, so we have our lead meter on uh, continuity. So let's go to ground. And this should be ground, but no other pin should be ground. Nope, only that one. So nothing shorted. Um, the two pins here for vertical on the header for the yoke are in good shape. The horizontal, not so much. We need to hit those. We're going to bridge this here. It needs a full reflow because uh, C38 here is kind of weak. There's a number of iffy spots here. But just as a general overview, all the culprits have already been hit. The normal culprits, uh, D13, D14, R91, R92. Um, he's already changed IC2 and IC3, which is the vertical IC. IC4 is the voltage regulator. Um, uh, that looks suspect. As a, That doesn't look legit, but we'll test our B+. Plus. If it's 130, it's legit. Uh, well, I gotta say, the only thing I suspect at this point is Q9. 
because with vertical position and size doing absolutely nothing, uh, Q9 is in the circuit that controls that, this little transistor here. So let's test it and see what it reads. And also you could have an issue with Q8. Q8 could be an issue or Q9 could be an issue. Uh, but generally speaking, Q9 uh, provides issues with hold. Um, I think Q9 also sometimes, if you have no contrast control, could be Q9. But I suspect Q9 or Q8 is being faulty. That is, that is the that could be the cause of the no position or size adjustment. So let's check Q9 first. And the way you read this one is you put it on diode mode. On this particular one, you have to go positive center, and we get 0.67 and. 0.645, I think that's correct. Now Q8 should be the same thing. Yeah, see that's 0.7, or 0.67 and 0.67. This one though is 0.67 and 0.64. Let's test the traces, make sure that we have continuity. That runs up to here there and this one goes to hmm why is that intermittent uh, this one goes to here Flow this stuff. Does that make it better? That's better. Okay. Well, I wonder if that did anything. I'm I'm half tempted I'm half tempted to simply throw a new one in there just to see if that does it, but there's no reason to if it's good. So there's a ribbon cable here also, this little black ribbon cable. I like to always reflow that because this black ribbon cable carries some signals from the, pot, from the pots over to the vertical section. So I like to uh, reflow the, the, the solder joints on this ribbon cable. That's what I just did there is it's these three it's these three here and these three there. And if you notice that ribbon cable actually one of those traces goes right to that Q, Q9 there. Uh, if we go here to here, well, there it is. So it could have been an issue with uh, bad solder joints on Q9, bad solder joints on the ribbon cable. Um, we, he already changed out the remote board so we know it's not the pots. Um, yeah, it could have been. You know what? I'm I'm tempted to try it right now. Um, that didn't look too well there. All right, I'm half tempted to try it again because if I'm gonna try it again, I'm gonna try it again just as it is now. If I still have the collapse, I'm gonna swap out Q9 with a known good one untested again. If we still have the collapse, then I'll come back and see if we can troubleshoot further. Well, no improvement. So after reflowing Q9 and the ribbon cable, I tested it, had no change to the discrepancy. So I replaced Q9, tested it, no change to the discrepancy. So that's not the issue. However, it, if you turn the vertical size and position all the way, it does move slightly, like ever so, eh, it does move very ever so slightly. Uh, well, you know, I think uh, I've got another chassis here that we can do some contrasting and comparing readings on. Um, this is a different revision, though. This one has the C7 location in it. Right here, there's a C7. You can see there. 
uh, but this one does not have that. So this is a, di a whole different revision. So I probably need to get one that has the right revision so we can do some contrasting and comparing readings. Um, but it may be something to do with IC1. We may have to change out IC1. But let's test D13, D14, R91, R92 first. The, all the culprits that sit in here, if D13 or 14 or R91, 92 are bad, that will cause collapse issues. But usually if any of those are bad or shorted or open, it's complete collapse, not partial collapse. So let's just make sure that uh, we have 1.2 ohms on D13 and 14. So, I'm sorry, R91, R92. So we're on ohms here, and R91, 1.4 is good. R, uh, R92 is over here, 1.3, that's good. D13, I never remember which way these go. I think it's this way for 13. Nope, other way. That is correct, and I think D14 is only going to read about 0.3 in circuit, and it's the opposite way. Yeah, 0.245, so that's a normal reading. So 13, 14, 91, 92, those are good. I didn't suspect they were bad, or we'd have co complete collapse. Um, the IC has been changed out. We know it's not IC2. It's not a voltage regulator or B plus problem. Uh, we know it's not a Q9 problem, so... Um, I gotta wonder if it's an IC1 issue. Let's take a look at the schematic and see and trace the circuit out. I mean, I've got a handful of these. You know what? That's better. I've got a handful of these on hand. We could just easily shotgun one in. Um, you know, I think let's just do that. Let's just shotgun in a, an IC1 because this is the amateur channel and. Uh, if that doesn't work, then we can go through the schematic and start troubleshooting and tracing things out because I have seen uh, some of these polycaps go bad, like I've seen C49 go bad. Like the rare, In the rarest, rarest occurrence, the uh, polycaps can go bad around the vertical section. I've never seen a C52 go bad, but I have seen the C49 cause problems back here. This little green polycap and this little polycap right here. I have seen those cause issues before. Um, but yeah, I mean, let's, uh, let's just shotgun in an IC1 and see, because these polycaps, uh, the, the collapse issue is separate from the size and position issue. The fact that we can't adjust vertical position or vertical size or 50, 60 Hertz <laughs> is something indicative of a separate issue to collapse. So if we find the problem with one, it could solve the issue of both. So let's just take IC1 and replace it and see what happens. Well, changing IC1 made no difference. And I didn't think that it would, but I wanted to go ahead and rule it out anyway. Uh, IC1 more controls like the horizontal side of things, uh, horizontal oscillation, horizontal hold, uh, horizontal position. I think it has to do with some of the sync circuit as well. So I didn't think that was our problem, but I changed it anyway because we already changed IC3 and 2. I mean, might as well throw a 1 in there just to round it out. So it wasn't necessary, but I wanted to, I wanted to rule that out as a possibility. So moving on from there, I thought the flyback might be the cause because uh, on the output of pin 10 on the flyback, I don't know which pin it is, but on the output of pin 10, it runs up through to the vertical IC and through some other components and things. Plus the fact that it's the original white knob flyback and it's cracked across here. You can see that it's cracked right across there and it's only going to get worse from that point. So I went ahead and changed the flyback out just because it needed to be changed out. Um, I mean, even though it was working, it's only a time, matter of time before it completely cracks and starts arcing. So I wanted to do that for the owner of this. Uh, but so I'm kind of back to square one. It's still partially collapsed, and I I, I really don't know what to do from this point. So I'm gonna ref I'm gonna reference the schematic and go through and start testing and poking around and testing uh, the uh, test points to see what I should read and uh, go through the schematic and look and see what circuit 
pathway that goes through for the resistors and the little uh, film caps and the poly caps and what it all goes through and things like that. It's just very odd. I've never seen a chassis before where the 5060 Hertz pod has zero effect uh, and the vertical position and vertical size it was advertised on the sheet as having no uh, no movement but it does move if you move it all the way up and down the image will move maybe like an increment like maybe an eighth of an inch it, it, it. so it does move but almost you know almost indistinguishable from uh, actual movement and the 5060 hertz pot I turned it all the way up and down and it does absolutely nothing I, I have no idea what to do with that so I'm gonna grab the schematic and start tracing things out see what I can find uh, so uh, if and when I find something I'll cut to the schematic or I'll cut back to the board and we'll see uh, what we can figure out so here we go all right welcome what we have here is the schematic for the K7000 and you have to excuse please excuse the herky jerkiness of this uh, mouse pointer because I've got the software here set to capture at 60 frames a second, but for some reason it's capturing at 24 frames a second and has the effect of making the mouse a bit herky-jerky. And I also increased the size of the pointer, uh, and it's real big for me looking at it here on the screen, but for some reason it's capturing it in a small uh, amount. So the, the mouse pointer is minuscule in the capture, but in person it's I've increased the size. So I don't know what's going on, just uh, funky software here, so I apologize, but I should be able to get the point across here for what I need to tell you. All right, so basically I mentioned the test points. Uh, we have like, you know, over here TP3, we have TP4, we have TP5, and then IC2 here is our vertical drive chip, and then IC3 is our vertical uh, deflection chip. So if we, have, this is just the schematic here. If you pull up the actual manual, uh, you can see that IC2 here, pin seven, pin eight, and pin nine are for our vertical drive circuit, and they feed the IC3 vertical deflection uh, IC, if you will, the IC3 vertical deflection chip. And they come in on pin 3 and 4, and it comes out on pin 2. So what we're concerned with is pin 7, pin 8, pin 9 of IC2, and pin 2 of IC3. Now we also checked, we also replaced IC1, but I knew IC1 wasn't our problem because IC1 has to do with contrast and brightness and your blanking circuit and your horizontal sink and things like that. So I knew that wasn't the problem. It also deals with color. So if you're missing a color, if you have no red, no green, or no blue, and you've ruled out a neckboard problem and the, the transistors off of the uh, RGB input, uh, if you're pulling your hair out and you have last resort, IC1 is usually your issue because it's the RGB color uh, chip. So anyway, I knew that wasn't our problem, but I wanted to rule it out. So anyway, IC2, 7, 8, and 9. And I see three, two. So if we go back to our schematic, uh, you can see here that uh, test point five is right here. It's directly tied through R77 straight up to pin two of our IC3. So if we go back to our, our manual here, let's actually scroll up. It shows you what you're supposed to read on IC3. So IC number three, pin two, should be 12.2 volts. Well, I don't have 12.2 volts. I have 1.7 volts. So that's our problem is something is pulling our 12 volts down to 1 volt on pin number 2 of IC3. So if we go back to the schematic, um, we're also concerned with pin 7, pin 8, and pin 9. And we know our 50, 60 hertz pot right here, we know that that is completely dead. That nothing, this does absolutely nothing. So I went through off of pin 8, and I checked C51. I, it comes down here. I checked C51. I checked to make sure the pot was working. I checked R78. I checked R107. I checked R80. And R78 comes straight down into pin 9, which goes right to our vertical size pot. It's also tied in with our vertical position pot. So R78 is good, R70, I'm sorry, R78 is good, R107 is good, R80 is good. Uh, the vertical, I'm sorry, I, it's been a long day. <laughs> this thing has made me almost quit. Uh, 50, 60 hertz pot we know is good, C51 we know is good. I checked it, it's 45k ohm across C51. And I actually have two other working 25 inch chassis here, K7000 that I've been using for reference. And so I, on those two chassis across C51, I read exactly 45k ohm. Across C51 on this chassis, I read exactly 
45k ohm. So we can rule out C51. It comes back through 8, and it goes through R67. That was exactly 62k ohm, so that's not the problem. And this comes back through, it goes into pin 13. It comes back down here, it goes through R131. It goes through R64. It goes through C26. And then back down through to pin 10, which is the other side of our vertical hold. So we know that's all okay. So nothing on pin 8 should be bad. So pin 7 comes through here, and it goes through R75, it goes through C52, it goes through C47, it goes through R63, C14, and back up and over through R68, R69, down through R71, R70, R149, C31, C30, and then back through this way over off to our flyback. All that checked good. Uh, I spent hours and hours and hours checking resistors, taking them out of circuit, checking them for what they're supposed to read for the schematic, putting them back in the circuit, checking them against the working chassis. I could find no anomaly. Uh, after hours and hours, I, I could find nothing. Uh, pin 9 of IC2 comes out, and it goes right to C54. C54 checked good. It comes through R76, that checked good. C53, that checked good. R77 checked good. C49, R82, R83. Uh, R3 is on different circuit. Uh, C50, R81. We already changed Q9. R100 was good. R141 wasn't attached to it. That's a different mod. Uh, C71 checked good. And we have 25. It's actually 25 and a half volts is what we have. It's marked 24. We have 25 volts from the flyback on pin 6 and pin 3, so we're good there. So we know our R91 and, and C3, or D13, R91, R92, uh, D14, C41 is good, C40 is good. So, I mean, I spent hours and hours and hours and hours, I probably like seven or eight hours, checking components, removing them from the circuit, checking them out of circuit, putting them back in the circuit. I could find nothing wrong. And I tell you guys, I tell you right now that I have never... In almost 17 years of working on K7000s, I've thrown, I have never once ever thrown my hands up in the air with the 7000 and said, that's it, I quit, I cannot figure this out, I don't know what's wrong, it has defeated me, I'm going to walk away. Not once have I ever done that. I've come close. Other chassis, sure, like Polo, Henrik Polos and stuff, I throw my arms up and say, that I'm done, F this, I'm out. <laughs> But the K7000, I've come close a few times, but I've always been able to get the, get it figured out. Uh, for the, On this instance, I came as close as I ever have to completely quitting and out of just complete frustration and said, nope, that's it, I'm done. I have no idea what to do. I came as close as I ever have with this one. So after like seven or eight hours, I had to sleep on it. So I walked away. I got a good night's sleep. I came back to it. And I found the problem. With a fresh set of eyes and a, a fresh mindset, I figured out the problem. So I mentioned before that coming off a of pin 8, down through C51 to our 50-60 hertz pot, knowing that this does absolutely nothing, that was the biggest head-scratcher of, of this whole ordeal. Uh, it, was all, it was mentioned by the owner of this that the vertical size and vertical position didn't do anything. Well, they did. They, they moved the screen a very minuscule amount like a maybe a, a centimeter you can move it up and down and watch watch the screen move up and down about a centimeter so it does do something very little though but the 50 60 hertz pot absolutely does not do anything at all in any way shape or form so I thought okay that has to be part of the problem so I removed R78 and put a replacement in there it did nothing I put a brand new R71 on there. I'm sorry, R107 in there did nothing. I put a brand new R80 in there. It did nothing. I put a brand new R67 in. It did nothing. It wasn't until I replaced R. I'm sorry, C51. I replaced C51. Put a, a different C51 in there, and boom, full deflection. Problem solved. Chassis is working. Bad. It was a bad C51. Never in my wildest dreams would I have ever imagined this C51 would be bad. Now, what this is, this appears to be some type of tantalum cap. Uh, it is drawn like an electrolytic. So if you look over here at C14, for instance, these two lines, this indicates a film cap, a metal film capacitor. If we look over here, let's say at uh, C40, this is 35 volt 2200 microfarad. You can see here it's drawn with this little U shape going to ground, this little U. This is the positive side, this is the negative side with the U. Uh, C51 is drawn the same way. 
but it, it's so it's drawn as an electrolytic, but it's, it looks more to me like a, a, a tantalum cap. So I'll show you this here, and what we'll do is I have the the bad one back in, and I'll show you that the system is collapsed, and we'll take it out and put a known good one in, and I'll show you that it's working. So I'll show you live that C51 was our problem, but it's tied right to the 5060 hertz pot. So I mean, I probably should have just shotgun in all these parts first. But the fact that vertical size and vertical position were being affected, I went with the rest of the circuit before I kind of tackled this. But uh, so I kind of wasted a lot of time just being, you know, not smart about it. But breaking out the schematic helped me figure this out. But yeah, that that was it. So um, I wouldn't say the time has been wasted, but a, a learning ex learning experience for sure. That there's no doubt about that. But it's drawn as electrolytic, but it's it's got to be a tantalum of some kind, a tantalum cap. So, all right, so now that we've kind of discussed all that and you have a better idea, a better grasp of uh, how this circuit is working and what you're supposed to read, and get yourself a copy of the manual here. I just Googled this and found it. So the manual here can be invaluable because it shows you what you're supposed to read. Um, now, I see two. I had all these voltages were correct. All these voltages on pin 1 through 16 on IC2, these were all correct. What the only anomaly really was was that the 12 volts on pin 2 was actually one volt, 1.7 volts. So that's where I kind of went. But it ended up being a red herring because for some reason, uh, the 5060 hertz pot not working with the bad C51, C51 was inducing incorrect information, incorrect, I don't know, I wouldn't say voltage, but C51 being bad was causing IC2 to not drive the voltage out to pin two because the voltage, uh, let's look at let's look at this here. Hold on, let me. I may be wrong here. Uh, okay, yes, pin seven is an output. So if you look here, vertical drive pin seven is an output going out on pin seven. If you follow this, if it, pin seven is an output. It comes over here and goes down through C forty seven right into pin two. So C fifty one being bad was killing the output of pin seven for our twelve volts to IC two. I'm sorry, IC three on pin two. So that ver that absolutely was our problem, C51. But I didn't realize that until like seven or eight hours into this. So I, I came as close as anybody ever has to giving up on a on this on <laughs> trying to figure this out. Or any, as close as anybody would have. Any other sane person would have just quit and gone into something else. But I have no life, so I chose to keep going. Plus, the person that sent this to me was counting on me to get this fixed. So. Anyway, that was the problem, C51. So let's get uh, back off the uh, schematic here. Let's get back on the, I'll get the chassis on the tube and I'll show it still uh, partially collapsed. Then we'll live, I won't cut away. We'll remove the chassis, swap it out with a known working C51 and I'll show you that it's working. So here we go. All right, so we're back on the tube, ready to go. Uh, the C51, the little culprit, resides right there back up a bit there so c51 this little tantalum looking guy right there uh the red guy that's our uh that's our culprit and never have i ever seen that be bad i this is a first for me in, in all ways shapes and forms <laughs> i never would have imagined that little tantalum looking cap it's drawn as electrolytic but like i say it resembles a tantalum uh so that's the bad one and it's tied right to the 5060 hertz pot and runs up through here to IC2 and was killing our output on pin 7 to our vertical IC. So test point 5 that is actually right here. You can see uh, TP5. Maybe you can't here. Uh, yeah, TP5. It's hard to see. TP5. There you go. On that test point, on a working chassis, you're supposed to have 6.7 volts. So we'll just say 7 volts. And I've got it hooked up here. So uh, we will turn on test pattern generator, and we'll turn on the chassis. One, two, three. Oh, you know, those of you, those astute uh, watchers of this channel will know that I always count off before we turn on power. Um, anode neck, yoke, ground, video power, remote. And I didn't do that this time, and guess what? I forgot the power, so, but we've got... Uh, anode, neck, yoke, ground, power, video, and remotes hooked up. So now we're good. <laughs> Let's try again. One, two, three. All right, now there you go. 1.14 volts. 
And if we look at our screen, we are collapsed. Same exact problem as before. There you go. 1.14 volts. Now, let's turn it off. Turn this off. Disconnect this from our test point. And let's see if we can do this. I, I want to do this live. My replacement capacitor is right here. Uh, I took this off of a parts chassis, but there it is. Uh, it, I, I, just to reiterate, when I read across C51 with ohms, it's 45k ohm. On this chassis here that is working, I read across C51, and uh, this one has, where is it? This one has a resistor tied with it right there. Uh, but it reads 45k ohm as well. And then I had this donor chassis that I read across uh, C51. This is the one that I stole from, where are you at? Uh, yeah, here we go. C51, right there. Sorry for the bad camera work, but this read 45k ohm, that read 45k ohm, this read 45k ohm, so you wouldn't think that C51 was bad. But at desperation, I started shotgunning in parts on that 50 to 60 hertz pot circuit, and lo and behold, that was it. So, I need two hands to do this. Can I set this up where you'll be able to watch me do this? Uh, well, maybe. Uh, let me set you down here. Uh, I want to, for dramatic effect, I want to do this live here. So let me set up a tripod. So we can view this here. What in tarnation happened? Okay, are we going to be able to do this? Let's see. Uh, it may be difficult, but we will try. Okay, so let's take this out. Let's disconnect our decals. There we go. All right. So let's take this apart here and see if we can do this. All right. Where are you at? Where are you at? Uh, where are you at? Where are you at? I got to get my bearings here. Here we are. My poor batons. He knows, Doctor. He knows. Okay, that sucker should be loose. Let's see if we can get this out of here. Uh, of course not. What are we stuck on here? Stuck on something. Oh, well, it helps to desolder the correct component. I desoldered the wrong component. Because I was upside down. Don't blame me! It's upside down, damn it. That's why this is the amateur channel. I can't even get the darn thing back in. There we go. Now stay in there. Okay, let's try again. This is all, of course, unnecessary. I could just cut away and change it out, but I want you to see, I want you guys to see and experience in my happiness when uh, we see it work. Put that guy back in.
and there we go it's out I don't even know if you can see it but there it is <laughs> so we'll set this up here and we'll grab our good one and we'll put it in there we go and it's staying in quite nicely and we shall solder it in thusly there we go it is in now let's put the chassis back in we don't need the degauss hooked up but I'll plug it in anyway and we're safe and secure okay let's hook test pattern generator back up let's hook our test point back up to TP5 and with any luck we should have full deflection and 7 volts on TP5 moment of truth here we go one two three well hmm 3.2 but do we have full deflection uh, come on focus partial deflection that's different from what it was doing before oh you know what I'll bet you we simply need to adjust it now Let's see if adjusting it. <laughs> and look at that! 6.6 .6 volts. <laughs> you little rascal. You little rascal. C51. <laughs> oh man. Look at that. Have you ever seen a prettier sight? Uh, I need to, of course, uh, let's do some adjustments here. Brightness contrast all the way down. Screen pot up until we get raster lines, which we already have, so we turn it down until they just go away, roughly there. Supplement back with brightness and contrast. Brightness needs background should be black right there. Contrast, nice. Look at that. Uh, H position right there there we have good width okay vertical size does it work yes it does outstanding we need to fix <laughs> we're getting squished again down here i'll fix the 50 60 hertz but uh vertical position does that work yes it does so now we need to do the more of the 50 60 hertz pot to fix down here it needs to be right there and now look at that 840 we are in business ladies and gentlemen that was it bad c51 this little bugger yeah, this I, this caused me eight hours of gnashing of teeth and head scratching and banging the head against the wall this little culprit right there I never would have imagined that would be a problem but as you saw live on camera that was the issue so Hopefully you learned something. I know I did. I need to go through and uh, do a little bit more reflow. But we got a new flyback full cap kit. Uh, eventually I'll get all the reflow done, get everything cleaned up, all the flux and residue and everything, and go over the neck board a little bit more and do what needs to be done. But for uh, purposes of this video, the chassis is now repaired. Uh, have you ever seen a more beautiful sight? I'm telling you. <laughs> this is a big payoff for me because I was this close to saying i give up but uh persevere keep going you'll eventually get it so case in point case in point so thanks for watching a uh, very entertaining video here glad i could help you out glad i could make some good content for you stay tuned for more like share and subscribe i appreciate it and we'll see you next time